Hi, we're Laura and Dan. We've bought a beautiful rustic Portuguese barn and have literally zero knowledge of building and farming, but plan on converting it into a beautiful off-grid homestead. Follow us on our journey. Today was a beautiful start of the day. The birds were chirping, insects were buzzing around and the sun was glorious. Sometimes it's good to start your day slow and it's the simple things like making your bed, putting the kettle on and tidying the van that bring you into the present moment. I find a lot of joy in these simple moments. There's so much satisfaction to be found in a morning routine. For me, it's one of my favorite things about life on the land. On the year we've got lots of projects planned on the land but the thing is we're just waiting for the building materials to be delivered we think they're going to be delivered this week but I think in Portugal things take a, a slower rate so we'll see if they get delivered but uh, something to look forward to for us anyway what we're going to do in the meantime is we've got a bell tent we've brought that over from the UK so we're going to put that up today To start out, we worked out where was the best place to put the bell tent. We started off by measuring the area, then Dan cleaned the surface of any rocks, sticks and debris. To set up the bell tent we brought up different bits and bobs that we had stored in the polytunnel. Some fell to lay on the ground and some wooden poles to give extra strength. So what we're doing at the moment is that we're basically prepping a base ready for the bell tent to be placed upon it. So obviously a lot of you out there is probably going to be asking the question why are you not building it on pallets, why are you not building it on decking? And that's because the the wood prices in the, in the moment are so expensive and we got the wood priced up to do the decking and it wasn't worth it for the, lo for the longevity in terms of how long the bell tent's actually going to last it was completely pointless so we could spend that money in better places and utilize it on the land much better so that's what we're going to do we then looked at the alternative option to try and get some pallets but even pallets are so expensive at the minute and normally you can get them for free i know you can but not right now you can't at the moment so the amount of pallets that we needed was going to also be a very a lot, very cost a lot of money. So the other day when we were out, when we were mooching around the bins, <laughs> we actually found a lot of this old felt and we also found some really huge big plastic thick tarps. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to utilise, we're going to clean out this whole space and then what we're going to do is, is we're going to lay down some tarps, lay down these for extra insulation and also extra protection from the ground uh, temperature and ground moisture so that helps the longevity of the bell tent. We then cut and laid out the ground mats.
picked up this really heavy duty thick like industrial top and while at the shops it kind of just leaves stuff to the side for you to for you to take or to utilize and i think this was actually one of the like an advertising top because on the other side it's got a picture of a lawnmower and stuff so it's definitely waterproof and stuff because it's meant to be meant to be outside advertising but yeah good to repurpose it When Dan had his back turned, I decided to play a little prank on him. <laughs> right, Laura, can we do it properly this time? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to report her. Men, men in need. Yeah. Wives, wives who beat up men. <laughs> Husbands. <laughs> Husband beater, that's what it is. <laughs> Laurie's like a, it looks like a scene from like Dirty Dancing in here. <laughs> it actually does. <laughs> I don't want to swing on it. <laughs> it actually does as well. It looks, you know, the back row of the sun. Yeah. The sun looks like all dead red, red and stuff. It looks like a pole dancer. Welcome to the Moulin Rouge. <laughs> Welcome to the Origin Homestead off-grid. <laughs> Where all your deepest fantasies are fulfilled. <laughs> the dirtiest. The dirty ones anyway. Centre bits in, we've just got another archway to put all the door up and then we're just going to go peg the rest of the tent and then it's up. Easy peasy. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. We'll make anything look difficult, so. <laughs> Until it comes down. Yeah. I think how it's meant to go. I think these bits are meant to go through here maybe, Dan? Could, could do, couldn't it? I think it might be right now. It'll make it stronger. Yeah. Now we've got the main shape set up, we're just going to go around and peg the outside of it so it's nice and sturdy. I'm going to leave that there for now and then we're just going to get the kind of the, make sure the shape's a complete size and I'll go around and bang them all in.
The reason why I'm putting all these different stakes around the belt end is because it's much more efficient than having pieces of rope all sticking out. Um, so, I mean, these 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 pieces of um, wood that I've got here, they're not they're not the best. You know, I could go thicker and make it better, but for for the sake of this belt end, this does the job. And these were found for free on the land, you know. So, um, simple simple ways, simple methods, does the job. Having fun carrying all that, Laura? Yeah. Feels like this is what we're going to have for our papers for our residency. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looks like you've been made homeless. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> and what are you doing with that, may I ask? What are you, what, 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 uh, wh where are you going to stick that? I'm going to stick it in a bell tent, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's going. <laughs> Help me. We've already got Kaya and Martin to put down on the floor, but what we're going to do is we're going to put these foam boards down as an extra layer of insulation between us and the Kaya Martin, so just to provide a little bit more insulation in here. we've got some bits hanging over of the felt underlay that we'll put on what we're going to do is we're just going to take a Stanley cut round it just to make it look tidier and just so the rain doesn't kind of sit here and maybe fall back underneath the tent Then Dan got to try out his new tool. Slicey, slicey time. Like a knife through but of that. I remember um, in the summer, when we were doing the pallet pools and we were utilizing pallets all around the land, I was kind of chiseling in and, and kind of like <laughs> taking us hours and hours just to kind of like sort a few different pallets out. And someone in the comments recommended um, this tool, so I decided to get pick one up for quite cheap and uh, well worth the book <laughs> to get in there. What are you up to now? So what I'm doing is, is I'm going to be building a little bit of a step for the so we can get into the belt end. You know what I feel like, Laurie? You know in the UK how you've got them, um, they're called the rag and bone men, basically, you know, the scrap men? Yeah. So they walk around and they kind of like pick up all the rubbish from everywhere and that. Is that so what like, we are? So the amount of people, the amount of times that I've picked up free stuff from the bins and all that, I'm going to be, I'm going to turn into the Portuguese rag and bone man. <laughs> so when I'm walking around the land, I'm just going to start shouting, rag and bone, any old rag and bone. <laughs> No. Sort of feels like half the time the amount of times we've like found stuff for free. <laughs> <laughs> does the job though. It does. Dragon bone. Any old dragon bone. <laughs> we then started laying out the Kaya Man.
We've got the Kaya matting in now and just really chuffed with how it looks inside the bell tent. We went for quite a big bell tent, we've got a five metre one so we've got lots of space for activities. You're damn right Laura, there's loads of space for activities and don't we love activities? After work in the pool, it was time to head to the city. We picked up a second hand mattress for super cheap. You gonna do the bed test, Laura? Yes, I'm gonna see. Come on then. Hey. That's quite a firm one, it's good. Not bad, I like it. We've got some free wall art courtesy of the olive tree that's right next to the bell tent, so nice mm. to get a little bit of shade from it as well and also creates a really beautiful pattern on the, on the wall. Looks sick, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks really good. We installed a flue for the log burner. When cutting through the tent, we were so nervous as we didn't want to completely wreck it. <laughs> Laura? Laura? Yeah? Can you pass that spanner please? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> So now I've fitted in the flue hole, what I'm going to do is, be, is before I bring in the stove and fit the stove, what I'm going to do is, is I noticed the other day when we were uh, doing some work on the land, there was a lovely piece of huge slate um, tucked away, hid underneath the, underneath the dirt when we were kind of digging and doing some channels. So me and Laura's going to go down the bottom of the land, I'm going to clean it up a little bit and then I'm going to place the slate in this centre point here before I bring in the, the fire stove. So this is the, the big piece of slate that I mentioned before about, it's a beautiful piece of slate. So when we were kind of like digging and making a channel in this area, I found this bad boy. Oh, it's too heavy for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I'm just gonna, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to squirt it down, give it a bit of a clean and that will make a beautiful piece of stone ready for the um, log burner. Squirt. <laughs> squirt. Squirt it down.
left our fit in the stove, it was time to decorate. We picked up this old chest of drawers for around £20 in the UK. We hauled it all the way here in the truck. got everything that we need to put in the bell tent in now so I'm going to show you around. Here we have a rug that we brought over from the UK. We really like it because it's got like a little Moroccan-y feel which is what we wanted to go for in here. I like how it's sitting in front, it's like right in front of the fire so on a night time we can just have the fire going. And we've, also, we've also got these moroccan -y style lanterns that we brought over which are really nice that we'll put a candle in at night time and it green brings like a mandala effect on the walls it's really nice so we've got a few of them in here we've got my salt lamp which is real salt so it's sweat so that's why we've got it in a little pick like a, a dish just so it doesn't go on the choir mat in we've also got my guitar which i'm not really good at playing so i'm not going to play any of that for you we've also got a didgeridoo mate didgeridoo bloody do <laughs> um, didgeridoo can't play that either <laughs> it's just <laughs> made for effect but uh Maybe Dan will give it a go later. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But uh, I really like it because it just, it just looks really authentic and nice. We've got a finger instrument, which we think is really cool. Just plays some tunes like that. We've also got our sound balls, which we really like. We've got some ornaments that were brought over from the UK that we both had in another one of these lamps. These are the fairy lights we got from Dan's mom's house and we've got them all around the back of the tent so they look really cool when they're on at night time. We've also got the bed in that we picked up from the city. In the future we're going to take this off the floor but we just haven't got anything to do that right now. We also need to buy a duvet and some pillows for it but here it is for now. Here we have the drawers that we picked up from the UK. We really like them because they're solid oak and they're really sturdy so we're happy with them. Picked them up for quite cheap as well. We've got some of our ornaments and crystals on the top. We've also got some books inside and some board games. What we're like is that when, if we do end up staying in the bell tent and living inside the bell tent, we'll be able to put our clothes inside of here and just gives us a little bit of extra storage. So in here we've got some of our books and board games. Someone left a funny comment saying, we didn't bring worries with us to come back to the land, but we brought our Connect 4. <laughs> That's so true. You need Connect 4 when you're off grid. Yeah, if you haven't got Connect 4, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> and so we've just got some art supplies in there and just some board games. Here we have our log burner. It's, we went for the one with the bigger window so we can actually see what's going on inside of there, which is really nice to have that. We've also got these little racks so we can cook stuff on the top of here if we ever need to. Or dry some socks. Or dry socks, or clothes. Or, or anything, underpants. Anything that's damp <laughs> when Dan wets himself and stuff like that. Yeah, you're the one who wets yourself. We've seen in the previous video. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got the slate that we uncovered down the bottom of the land here, which looks really nice. It just adds it and makes it really cool, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We're really happy with the space inside of here. It's a really good option for us because when we'll have people come to stay on the land, it'll be somewhere for them to stay. Also, we're thinking about selling the van in the future, so it's going to be an accommodation for us while we're doing up the barn and getting the barn ready to live in. So it's just an all round good space for us to have. After we put the bell tent up, it's just started lashing down with rain, so we'll come to hibernate inside the van. Yeah, we're hoping that over the next few days the rain stops. As you can probably hear in the van, I'm not sure if you can hear it or not, but the rain is completely lashing down. 
and then um, we're hoping that we've got we've got so many different jobs that we want to do we want to start the barn we've got some other big projects alongside of the barn that we want to start working on that we can't wait to share with you so we're just hoping that we can get a few more days of dry weather so we can actually tick some of these jobs off the list and then um, you know the off-grid journey for us as we always mention you know it's something that we're still kind of stumbling our way through we're still learning and um sometimes you know when you see these vlogs you know you're only kind of seeing a little snippet of our full day of us working on the land and what we share with you you know like there's things on that goes on behind the scenes like for example uh, the other day we went into the city to try and buy adapter just for the gas and normally that would be like a 10 minute or 15 minute job but over here because we're still learning a new culture we're still learning a new language finding our way around places it ended up taking three or four hours of our time and a lot of times we, we have like situations like that where we'll go into the city to try and pick something up, let alone it's like kind of an hour drive, it then ends up turning into a full day job where we kind of waste yeah, a full day. Does. So so there's that going on as well. So it's just kind of trying to adapt and fit in from all different ways and at the same time build a homestead, do all the vlogging and things like that. So it's just a part of the journey anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It makes it exciting though, it makes it means that our days are more rich and we'll remember them more. Yeah, we we'll definitely we'll remember do. them more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But anyway, we're going to end this week's video here and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.